So I thought in the spirit of Valentine's Day, we would talk about how to protect and or be available for love that you rightly deserve. Um, and we're going to organize that discussion, though, around enmeshment. This, a number of years ago, <clears throat> Judith Wallerstein and a colleague of hers, two psychologists, uh, did a study of 50 couples uh, on the West Coast, uh, married couples, uh, heterosexual. And they were married for seven to 10 years, and she surveyed them, and she wanted to know uh, what they did. Uh, and they all reported happy, uh, successful, contented marriages. And she wanted to know what they did, what were the tasks that they accomplished. And so she wrote, they wrote a book called uh, The Good Marriage and the Nine Tasks of a Successful Marriage. And the first um, task that the couples reported to the researchers was complete separation from family of origin. I'll let that settle into you now. Complete separation from their family of origin where they were then able to rearrange the lines of connections to both families. First loyalty is to the family of procreation, my current romance. My second loyalty, or even further down the list, is my family of origin. People who come from a mesh background get that mixed up. And they're bound and torn by guilty obligatory contracts to family members. I, I, I'm beginning to call that the family brain these days. The family has one brain and you don't get a vote, so to speak. And, um, and if your loyalty lies to your family, you're in trouble. Because there's only so much availability you will have to your partner. And so if you come from a mesh background, you always feel like your emancipation should be a co-assigned agreement. And you're waiting for your parent to bless your emancipation. Don't wait. It ain't coming. You deserve it. You deserve their blessing and their support. After all, it is their job as parents to send you off and to manage their own loss and their own grief about the losing their uh, um, beautiful son or daughter to the world. It's not your job to cushion that blow at all. It's your job to unfold the life that you're supposed to be living fully, including your romance. So to whatever extent that in these enmeshed systems that you have entangled yourself with your family of origin and or the parent who is primary in that will prejudice you, leave you uh, less available to the journey that you're supposed to be having, including that of romance. So the first thing that you can do on this Valentine's Day is to begin practicing some emancipation. Both partners in a romance are responsible for creating safe spaces between you. No one, no, no, no one member of that coupleship is more responsible than the other to prevent intrusion meaning uh, other people, family members, uh, or my own personal issues that I project onto you. So we have a responsibility to protect the space by which we share with our beloved. And that's hard to do because we have lots of, lots of things that impinge on us, lots of issues, but everybody has them. It's hard to keep that a perfect space. And yet, the more conscious you are about it, the better. So another recommendation for Valentine's Day is to create a very, a very specific um, space between you and your partner. 